Hi, welcome to the latest um, installment on Irish ancestors, the site and the people. Today, I'm going to be talking about what I call reverse genealogy, which is essentially tracking living relatives. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of the sources that you might use. Um, I'm going to take a particular example and go step by step, uh, just showing you. It, it's more the, the, the principle than the, the, um, the, the detail. Again, um, on the site, there are guides to the main um, sources used to, to um, come forward, to track relatives forward. So let's, let's get down to brass tacks and start work. Okay, here we are at the site to start off with. Um, that's not where I'm going to, to, to start from. What I'm going to start from is here. This is a research commission. Um, Thomas Moorcroft was born about 1874 in Ireland. His father is reputed to be James. He left Ireland for the, the US as a young man and his descendants now want to know if he has any living relatives. Okay, so the, the, the aim is to find, first of all, to confirm um, the, the birth, uh, find the mother's maiden name and so on, um, possibly have a little look further back, um, but mainly to see, does Thomas have any brothers and sisters? Did any of them stay in Ireland? Did any of them have descendants? So it's as, it's as simple as that. Um, and it's a lot easier than um, you might think. But wait, I hear you say, Moorcroft, this is not exactly Walsh or Brennan or Kelly, is it? That's cheating. And you're right, it's not Walsh or Brennan or Kelly. It is cheating. It's my video, I can do what I want. Okay, also, the point is, I want to show you uh, how it works simply. I, um, I, I don't want to have to wade through the, the sheer numbers of records that you'd have to with a very common surname. So um, I've picked Moorcroft for that reason. I'm, I'm Plenty of excuses and I plead them all. Okay, first thing, born 1874, Father James. Um, the first thing I would do in that case is go to Family Search, to their transcriptions of birth records, 1864 to 1881. You see, it says 1620. There are about 200 between 1620 and 1864, and nearly all the rest are. These are part transcriptions of the state records of births um, up to the first quarter of 1881. Um, so what we're interested in is Moorcroft. Um, we want a Thomas. We want him to be around 1874, 1870, say 18. 70 to 1876, um, and we want his father to be James. Okay, James. And we want to search and see what happens. Okay, and well, there's a Moorcroft, but it's not a Thomas. Um, let's see, is it? These are record details, mail. 1872, no name given. Hmm. Okay, um, what about this one? Female. Okay, parents' names. And okay, so we have what looks like um, three births recording a James Moorcraft as father. Let's see if there are any. Let's see, all Moorcrofts. There's no Thomas there as far as I can see. So uh, Moorcroft, uh, Father James, James, and let's, okay. James Moorcroft and Jane Nicholson, Moorcroft, Nicholson, Moorcroft, Nicholson, Moorcroft and Tanhill, that's 1794, so that's not much use to us. So it looks as if, um, the, the most likely candidate is this um, Jane Moorcroft, James Moorcroft and Jane, Jane Nicholson. Um, but there is no, there's a Susanna, sorry, there's a Samuel there. Oh, no, Peter. Um, there's two without names. What's going on there? Three without names. What's going on there? All right, there are two ways of finding out. Um, the first thing is to go into... Um, Roots Island, 
this is what I would do. Again, Roots Island, this is a subscription site. So you have to, to um, subscribe, log in. So we're looking for Moorcrofts. Okay, we want Moorcroft. This is an alternative way of coming at the same information. Always welcome. Let's try for a Thomas. Um, father's first name, James, um, 1874, plus or minus um, four, we say. And let's see what happens. And there's one, Thomas Moorcroft in Kilkenny and James Moorcroft and Jane, not recorded. So there's a baptismal record that matches, and this is the only one on the island, in Johnstown in Kilkenny. Um, but there's no, no birth record. All right, let's go back and expand it. So take all of that. So plus or minus 10 years, 1874. Father's first name, James. Mother's first name, Jane. So we'll see. Ah, uh, okay. And you can see the civil birth. This is what we were finding on family search. NR is not registered. And that 1872 civil birth is the man who was baptized as Thomas. So this is a demonstration of why it's a good idea not to take um, only one source uh, for your, your, your information. Um, let's go and look at the some of the other ones then. We have, um, what have we got? Well, actually, wait a second, we'll, we'll take that out. So Jane and the mother's surname was Nicholson. So let's be sure we're looking at the right family the whole way across. C-H-O-L-S-O-N. We'll take the year out. And, okay. Okay. There she is. Okay. Typical of um, Church of Ireland registers. And you notice that they... they the baptism, this was Church of Ireland. Typical is that they don't give the mother's maiden name. Okay, so um, so these are all uh, the, the, um, the right people. Um, so um, let's just see. Um, okay, let's go into Kilkenny and... Um, take the mother's maiden name out and search again. Okay, and there we have one more baptism. There's a Francis, there's a James, there's a John, Mary, Elizabeth. So this, I think we can take it pretty clearly. This is our man. This is the Thomas we're, we're to investigate, Father James. So we have, you can see, you have a lot, very target-rich environment here. What are you going to do about them? You, what you want to do is you want to find marriages for any of these children. Um, and how do you do that? Okay, you look for the marriage, take Francis there, the marriage of a Francis um, Moorcroft, whose father's name is James. So marriage records for Ireland, Francis, uh, father's first name, James. Let's see what happens. Okay, none. Okay. Um, Fanny is one of the, let's just see. Ah, okay. Fanny, not Francis. Again, you have to keep an ear out for the, the, the variations of it. The civil marriage should give us the father's name. And Fanny Moorcroft, James Moorcroft. One of the things you should have, uh, you should remember, keep an eye on for this as well, He's given as a policeman, James Moorcraft. And absolutely what you want is, um, let me show you the, the okay, again, the, the RIC records, the police records. Let's go to those and, um, and I'll show you what, what you can find out about them there. So constabulary or Royal Irish Constabulary Service Records, 1816 to 1922. And eventually find my past will serve them up to us. Again, um, James Moorcroft. So this is Fanny's father and Thomas's father. 
and there are 12 results. Let's have a look to see. The important thing to keep an eye on in the RIC records is the service number, particularly if a, if a, if a name is common and the service number, the, only one individual ever had the same service number. So you can see from these here, there are there's 52159 and there's 20955. Okay, so there are two individuals called James Moorcroft recorded there. Interesting. RIC service tended to run in families. So let, let's have a look at Fanny's father, um, who joined in 1856. That's what that tells you here. And um, the, the image should be coming up any second now. Um, let's have a, there we go. Um, one of the things about RIC record, RIC men, is that they very rarely, they weren't allowed to marry people from their home place um, in case they had too many in-laws that they would favour to and um, wouldn't police properly. Um, so they, they had to marry somebody from elsewhere, which means that very often where they marry and where they end up living is not where they're from originally. And you, I don't know if you saw on the, the listing there, the county it said was Longford. So here we have um, James Moorcroft, Okay, he joined at the age of 21. Um, he was five foot seven and a quarter. His native county is Longford. All right. His wife's native county is Tipperary North. All right. And he served in Tipperary North and Kilkenny. And he died on the 24th of February, 1877. So if you look at these, um, if you go back to the, the listing of the latest child is 1877. It's Margaret born in 1877. So that fits with that. And you can then go in, you can get his death record and see, see what it says. Um, but there, so he's, he's a policeman there. And um, what about the other James? Let's see. Um, let's see if we can bring him up. Um, oh, one of the things about um, doing research like this is that uh, it's, Always a good idea just to follow whatever threads throw themselves up in your face. That's it. Keep pulling the threads until you find another thread to pull. And before you know it, it'll be four o'clock in the morning and there'll be somebody hammering on the door telling you it's time to go to bed. Um, so James Moorcroft. This is the second James Moorcroft. Here he is here. All right. Um, his native county is Kilkenny. Um, Kilkenny slash Tipperary North Riding. And if you remember, that's where these people are from. So is it this man here, the James, born in 1865 or baptised in 1865? Um, 1865. So he, um, he was, what age was he on joining? He was um, da -dum, da -dum, James Moorcroft. He was 21 and 5 twelfths when he joined. Um, and he joined on the 27th of February, 1887. So 21 from 87, yes, this is a 64, 65, this is the man, okay? And he was pensioned on the 18th of the 8th, 1920. Dear God, he got out just in time, just before that, and the, the great guillotine came down. Okay, but that, that's a lot of service from 1887 up to 1920. Um, anyway, we have Francis, we had Francis there marrying George Johnson, if I remember rightly. So Fanny Moorcroft marrying a George Johnson. Um, I would always now as well go to the original, which is on Irish genealogy. And I would look for the original marriage because it, I am, I am um, constitutionally sceptical of any transcripts, and I like to see the original record myself. So we're looking for Moorcroft, who married a Johnson. Johnson. Okay. 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 What's going on there? All right. Let's have a look at the, is there something in the transcript? Okay. Mm -hmm. It should be there. Let's try 
Johnson Moorcroft. Let's see what happens. Johnson. Let's just try um, Moorcroft. T O O F T. Francis or Fanny. Fanny, she is there. And we'll try take that out and see what happens. And Fanny Moorcroft. Okay. Go back. We'll try Fanny manning a Johnson. Okay. And let's just see. George Johnson and Fanny Moorcroft. Okay. That's why we weren't finding her. Keep banging your head off the, the monitor screen until you find it. And um, let's just see. Oh, George Johnson and Fanny Moorcroft. It says here, there's James Moorcroft, policeman. This is the 11th Hussars. This is a soldier. Um, almost certainly um, an Englishman, I would think. But let's just see. The next stage in the coming forward is to find Johnson children with the mother's maiden name, Moorcroft. So we go back to that. We do an all Ireland search again. So we're looking for Johnson. And the mother's maiden name is Moorcroft. Um, I'm not going to search on, on all the variants there. Uh, Moorcroft. Well, more coughed, more croft. All right, there's a Mary in 1889 and a Thomas in 1893. Now, and I can tell you my next, the next stage would be to see if I can find these in the 1901 census, if I can find any evidence of deaths. Um, and there's no, no evidence like that. The next thing that would cross my mind is maybe they went to England. If he was a soldier, it's quite possible he went back there. So you're into the 1901, 1911 census for, um, for, uh, for England and Wales um, and the, the civil registration records for there. But I want to go back to um, one of the, uh, the, this man here, the James Moorcroft. He was definitely in Ireland in 1920. And a, a good way of doing a quick sweep of um, who might be there. Okay, you have these, what were they, seven or eight children? Um, Okay, you notice, okay, more search options. We're searching the entire island of Ireland. We know they were all born in Kilkenny because we've seen the baptisms there. So any Moorcrofts on the island of Ireland born in Kilkenny, there's only one. So go into him. James, head of the family. Again, always look at the original. Open it. And there he is, James Moorcroft, head of the family, Church of Ireland, Constable RIC. Married County Kilkenny. This is almost certainly the, the, the man that we saw being born in, or baptized in 18, 1865, joined the RIC, um, pensioned in 1920, and here he has children. Okay, to be sure, to be sure, we need to find his marriage to make sure that his father's name is James. So we go back to Irish genealogy, we search for um, James Moorcrofts, James. Croft and K zero in on the marriages, James Moorcroft, and he's there as Kate. Hmm. Okay, right. They have how many children? Two children, six. So probably a married sometime in the 1890s. Let's see what um, James Moorcroft, Elton Jane Hogg. Try the 1890s and see what happens. Okay. James Moorcroft, Constable, RIC, and Eleanor Kate Warner. Um, one of the peculiarities of the Irish genealogy indexes is that they don't give middle four names. So if you look at the, the actual printed index, it probably says Eleanor Kate or Eleanor Kate. So obviously she was, well, let's just check them in 1911 to be sure, to be sure. Um, and there we go. And there she is as Eleanor Kate in 
1911, just to confirm. So Eleanor Cade. So that's right. We're we're good. We know that um, they're the right family. His father is James Moorcroft. It says he's a farmer. Hmm. I think at this stage, this James Moorcroft, from what we'd seen, it died in 1877. So he'd been dead for a good uh, 15 years at this point. Um, it, it seems that this is probably the, the clergyman the, the, um, putting in the, the occupation. I know um, on my birth, it says that my father is a farmer, which is sort of the, the default occupation. And they didn't know what, what, a, uh, what occupation they had. So I think that, that's probably it there. But there's enough enough there to, um, there's enough there as well, if you want to go off on other directions, there's an address for the Elizabeth Kate Warner, Mitchell's Fort, Watergrass Hill. Um, James Moorcroft is living in Hall Bolan in Cork. Her father is Thomas Warner. You can go off, you can follow the Warner line as well. Um, she would be not a direct descendant, um, but her children would be. Um, it's a connection to the family, as I say, find a thread and follow it. Okay, so we have a James Moorcroft and we this is them in 1911. And they have um, five children. So the next thing you do is you go into Moorcroft marriages. Um, they come right up to the 19, mid 1940s. So um, late enough to be able to catch all of these and see if there are any Moorcroft uh, marriages. Um, let's just have a go. Um, so Moorcroft marriages in Cork. Let's just see Moorcroft, Moor, Moorcroft in Cork. Any any uh, Cork search. Okay, marriages. There's two marriages: James and Eleanor and Robert and Mary. So none of the the let's try. None of them seem to be married there. Okay, okay. Moorcroft in Cork, no. So we take Cork out and see what happens. And okay, see if we can match any of the, the names we have from here. So we have Elizabeth, Mary, Eleanor, Margaret, and James. Um, Mary, no, 1917. Okay, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. okay. That's the, the, the standard route of approach. Um, what I did with this one was slightly different. One of the main um, sources of family information once you come into the 20th century is um, Irish newspapers. And irishnewsarchive.com um, is the main 20th century source. Um, so this is the search, um, they were in Cork City, if, to search it, you go, you pick Cork, it says all examiners, all, all titles, um, the examiner, where are we? The Irish examiner. This is one of the peculiarities, the Irish examiner, until about 10 years ago, was known as the Cork examiner. Um, and they tried to broaden it, its appeal, and all they did was manage to confuse foreigners. So it's, it is the Cork Examiner, or if you're in Cork, it's the paper. Okay, that, that's what it's known as. So, again, a good Moorcroft. Let's see what happens. Moorcroft. Um, we want to search the Cork Examiner. From, we know they were, he was there from, say, 1890, 1889 to 1980. And see what happens, Moorcroft. Um, this is this is quite a, a slow site, particularly if you're searching all titles. But even without all titles, it gets kind of um, sluggish at times. So I'm going to skip from there to some I baked earlier, and here are some just samples of the the um, the things that come up from the the Cork Examiner. So a marriage. Birchill Moorcroft, 1930, it's in Nicholas Church, Cork. Um, Mary Frances Sissy Moorcroft, second daughter of James XRIC and Eleanor Moorcroft. Um, 
Charles Moorcroft, Thomas, only son of Mr. and Mrs. Charles of Balmaslow, to Nelly, the third daughter of Mr. and Mrs. James Moorcroft. Here you have two sets of two marriages, um, the, the, the Charles family and the Birchall family. Um, and the, here's the death of Eleanor Kate um, in 19, um, 1932. And here is in 1959. This is, these are the kind of ones that, that really give you access. So, for example, the husband, family, sisters and brothers of the late Val Moorcroft, Nay O'Sullivan of Rotherham and late of O'Brien's Terrace, Blarney Street, wish to express their deep appreciation. OK, so Val Moorcroft was born O'Sullivan and married somebody called Moorcroft. Um, there's no sign of that in the Irish genealogy records, uh, and, and they, uh, it, it's possible they were married after, after 1940, uh, 46, 47, but more likely that they were married in the UK. Okay, so how do you go about investigating somebody in the UK? This is my favourite. These are on other sources as well. I like to use the original because they're attend not to have shoehorned everything into the one the one size fits all. So we're looking for a marriage between Moorcroft Croft and O'Sullivan. S U L L I V A N. And uh, again, let's see, she died in 1959. The children were in their, their what ages were they? So um, probably 1920 to 1940, let's 1920, they like, um, that's 1925 to 1935, and find, um, okay, James J. Moorcroft to an O'Sullivan in Rotherham in 1932. Okay, that's almost certainly this James here. So you have the only male descendant of the, that James line, married in Rotherham. Okay, and his wife, Val, died in 1959, and that's what we were looking at here. Okay, one of the wonderful things about the, the um, English GRO records is that you can check for, um, let's see, the surname is Moorcroft. Moorcroft. And the mother's name is O'Sullivan. They marry, may have married in, in, in Rotherham, but the two of them were, were Irish, pretty obviously. So from 1932 on, 1932, 10 years to 1942, it's, it helps the, the database to give it just bite-sized bite chunks. So there's an Anthony. An Auntie W. Moorcroft born in 1934. Um, what about 1942 to 1952? 52. And you'll notice that this comes up, the births come much later than, um, than Irish genealogy. There's another, uh, another two, Mary and Peter. Okay, and you can, okay, the, the point of this is not to go through the entire process, it's to show you how the process works. You have people here born in the 1940s in Rotherham called Moorcroft. Um, you can then go to the British newspaper archives. You can go search the marriage records here for the marriage of Anthony or Mary or Peter Moorcroft. Um, there are all sorts of threads being thrown up here um, that, that you, you can follow up the Charles family, you can follow up the Birchill family. So um, the original the original commission was to know of any living relatives. Um, it, it seems to me there are loads of them. At this point, this is where genealogy shades off into private detective work, where you're talking about electoral registers and um, street, street directories and so on, but it's all doable. Um, <clears throat> that much said, one of the things I would say about what I've just done is that it leaves out some of the most important sources. It leaves out particularly um, the valuation office revision books. These are 
um, snapshots of the changes in land holdings. So that they're not they're no good for somebody a like, family like this, where the, the family weren't landholders, where they were RIC men. Um, but they give you this um, who is inheriting the land from who, um, and they come right up to the 1980s. In some cases for in commercial lands up to the 1990s and later. Um, so that they're much closer to the bone. The best example, if you want to see how they work, they're not online they're, they're for the 26 counties of the Republic. Um, the public record of the Northern Ireland, let me just show you those. P -R -O -R -O -N -I. Um, these are, they have digitized their valuation revision books and they're eventually, you get to search them. Um, let's see, Ballymore. Okay, a place name. So here, Ballymore and Armagh. And you can see you have a revision from 1865 to 79 and so on. You can go in and see which, they're very good images, um, excellent, uh, excellent images. You can go in and these are the, the revisions of what Griffith did in the 1860s, 1850s. So you can see all the changes to the land. The problem about it is um, that in Northern Ireland, the land taxation system changed in the 1930s. So these end in the 1930s. Um, if you if you could see, if we go back to, you can see the latest one is 1929 there. Okay. So they, they end 50 years before uh, the ones in the Republic. So they're, they're much easier to use and they're much less useful for living relatives. But if you want to get a sense of how the, the whole system works, this is probably the best way to go about it. Anyway, I think I've gone on long enough. Um, thank you if you've managed to make it this, uh, to the end of the video. Um, I wish you good hunting and I hope you found something out in what I've been saying. Thanks again.